Time is a tool that in itself brings wisdom, fulfillment, and inner peace. My guest today is a woman whose life's journey has precisely given her all of these qualities. Just in the tone of her voice, one can sense her calmness as she inspires us from the many life experiences of self-transformation throughout her process to attune these to her soul. She inspires me every day, and I am proud to call her a friend and a mentor. In this episode, we talk about life, death, conscious relationships, leadership, entrepreneurship, our businesses with doTERRA, and all of those areas that make up Elena Browers' life, and that also touch the many fibers of many other lives. My guest on today's podcast is a mama, a teacher. She has taught yoga and meditation since 1999 and in the most spectacular places, including MoMA, Guggenheim, and Central Park. You can take classes from her from the comfort of your own home at glow.com. She's also an author of two books, with the third one to be released in early 2021. She has her own podcast called Practice You, which is inspirational and beautiful and a must listen to. Mm. She's a double diamond leader with doTERRA and is simply a bright shining light for so many of us who have the pleasure of having her in our lives. I am so, so, so excited to have Mm. you on my podcast today. Thank you, Elena. I love you so much. Sister, (laughs) I love you so much. Really, I treasure you. I love you. And I remember the first day that we officially met because I'd been following you and attending several of your classes for many years. But that day that I met you, it was a very special day for me. It's a very special week because um, it was one of my trips to New York that I used to take regularly for by myself. And on these trips, I take classes with teachers that I love and that inspire me. And um, I had just been like to Deepak Chopra and Marianne Williamson's uh, talk the night before, and you were on my list for that night. And I got there early to Mindful, and I signed up and checked in. And then I got a call, and I walked out, and when and I kept on seeing like people walk in to Mindful. And when I walked in, there was already a line to go see you. And I was like, no, I was the first one here. <laughs> yes. And I remember that um, the person that was at the front. Uh, desk he said I I know that you're here first so let me walk you through this little door and you'll be in first and I was able to get like the front seat with you that night Mm. it was so magical (laughs) you were right you were just in front of me to my right with this smile on your face and yet I could smell that you were nervous you know in the most uh, in the most dear way and I was so excited that you stayed after so that we could get to talk and get to know each other a little bit. I know, I know. I was just like so, I had been following you for so many years. And that day that, that I had the opportunity to sit with you, I remember I was just starting my practice. Um, mm. I had just been like teaching yoga for three years, maybe, or, or in meditation. And I was such a perfectionist at that moment in my life. Like I wanted everything to be perfect. And I saw you with all your notes and your notebook and like post-its and I was like I can't believe she has notes you know because I was always so um I I was brought up with like you learn everything and you have everything in you and I never used notes and ever since that day I started going around with my notebook and I was like Uh this is so beautiful I can just be (laughs) that's the way my girl (laughs) that's the way and yeah so I would love for you to tell us a little bit about your journey you're just such an amazing woman today, but I know that we all have these stories and I'd like for, for you to just tell us a little about yours so that we can get to know you better. Hmm. Um, where should I start? I don't know where it all began. <laughs> well, to be honest, I don't feel like there was this one inflection point. I feel like it just kept, it just was happening over the course of, let's say from when I graduated from college, I started doing yoga and I think I was in college like my second or third year and I thought I was taking a martial arts class but really it was yoga and it was awesome and I loved it and I didn't go back to a yoga class until 1992 when I graduated and my boyfriend's mom Marlo 
Marlo Flowers in, in New York City, the best, she took me to a yoga class with her daughter and her son, who was my boyfriend. And um, I fell in love. I had been dancing ballet previously. So it was the best thing ever for me to go into a yoga class and be fully welcomed, fully received. Wow. And that was the beginning. You know, I, st I practiced for another six, seven years. I was still a clothing designer. I lived in New York. I moved to Italy for a couple of years. I was designing clothing and learning Italian and having what I thought was an awesome time, which it was. But I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was fulfilling my, my soul's purpose. So I came home, I got certified to teach art to children. And during that year, I met Cindy Lee, who was teaching, uh, subbing a class at Crunch. And she ended up becoming the first teacher training that I took in 1997 into 98. And that was it, started teaching thereafter and created a really nice following in New York, which was, you know, yoga was pretty new there. So at the time, I loved teaching and I was doing it kind of because I was good at it and I really loved it, but I never, ever in a million years would have expected that this would become a form of my livelihood. Never. That's how it happened. You know, I, I started to create for myself um, other opportunities to teach and then a, a dear student of mine who became one of my dearest friends after being my boyfriend he's still a great friend of mine he ended up writing a business plan for me to open up my own studio because he could see there weren't enough studios in new york at the time and there were a, a ton of students who loved working with me who would get lined up and why don't we open a studio so we did that and that was Vera yoga it lasted for 12 12 and a half years or so. Closed it like five or six years ago and never looked back. 10 years ago, I started working for glow.com, which I thought was absolutely bonkers, preposterous. Like, why would I want to teach yoga online? <laughs> and I said yes to it because Derek, the founder, was just such a great kid and I loved him and he just became like a brother to me, still is. And I still work there 10 years later and we're going to start live streaming soon, actually. So look out for that. Be back in action with you regularly. And um, I felt... Like I was in the right place when I closed the studio and I started doing a lot of things on my own. I finally, finally said yes to a business with doTERRA shortly thereafter. So glad I did that. And now this is how we work together now with doTERRA, which is like one of the greatest, you know, pleasures of my life, really, to help people get connected to different forms of preventive health care especially now when we can't even go to the doctor. I just tried to get a doctor's appointment for something I really need to handle and I couldn't get one until September. That, and that's kind of, right now I'm straddling the world of teaching online, which is so much fun, <laughs> and the challenge of creating potent space virtually. And my doTERRA team, which is, you know, many tens of thousands of households whom I take as my family and my responsibility to ensure that they have plenty of solid educational resources with which to share the benefits of the oils. And I don't make any sort of health claims or anything like that. What I claim is that the oils for me have been a, an indispensable emotional assist and continue to be so with physical benefits that I am unable to name socially, publicly, because of the restrictions on what I can say. But I can tell you for sure that my body and my life and the bodies of many that I know, and from kids to elders, have benefited greatly from the addition of foils into their lives. So now I do both. And it's so beautiful. You inspired me to start um, my own business with doTERRA. I think mm -hmm. it was like four years ago or five years ago, I don't remember, but I was mm -hmm. using the oils. I was one of those who used the oils, but had never even thought about sharing the oils with anyone. And, mm -hmm. and that's what you do. You just, you saw something in me. I was so busy. I remember I was just starting Regeneration Love. I had so much on my plate. And then you were just like, just start sharing, you know? Every, all the benefits that you have right now in your life will be the benefits for other people. You just start sharing exactly. naturally. And why would you not want to share health if this is part of spirituality and having a healthy lifestyle? So um, it's been an awesome journey to be yeah. part of, of this company. It's such a beautiful company. And now you have a team 
of folks who are all benefiting, not, not just with regards to the physical and emotional properties of the oils, but from the presence of the community. Like what more? We just desperately need good, solid community right now, supportive community right now. And also financially. You know, there are thousands of people on our team who are enjoying having a few extra hundred dollars a month. There are hundreds of people on our team who are enjoying having a few thousand extra dollars a month. What is the problem with that? And there's so much swirling around right now about, you know, oh, MLM is such a nasty negative model. And, you know, if I could say anything on that topic, I would say, guess what, guys? The patriarchy doesn't like MLM. (laughs) Why? The patriarchy doesn't like MLM because women can actually be at home, actually raising their children, actually present when something goes wrong, and actually earning money. So the patriarchy doesn't like that. So they will do anything to bash network marketing, otherwise known as multi-level marketing, when really you're just women are just building a network of people and organizing them on quote-unquote levels so that everyone can earn as much possible money as they can. What's so <laughs> wrong with that? <laughs> I, I think that as I see it, it's like the model of the new earth that we're creating, right? Let us pray that that is true. Honestly, I've, yes. I've just, all I know is what I see. And I have had so many dozens of women thank me for getting them out of debt, which I didn't do. They did. But I believed in them enough to encourage them to keep going. And families, kids who are now able to go to the school that the mom wanted them to go to, or who are now able to have clothing that they couldn't have before. Little things, big things. You know, what is wrong with that? It's more abundance. It's, it's opening up to that abundance. And yeah. And to that state and, and to that, because I, when I met you, I think you were blue, maybe? I don't remember. I was blue at the time. And oh, whatever. if you're listening to this and you're like, what the hell does that mean? There are certain sort of thresholds in the company where you have a certain number of people underneath you and you've arranged them in such a beneficial, uh, optimal way that each of the people on your team, each of the leaders on your team reach a quote unquote rank you know, which is just a certain, like I said, threshold that indicates that you've done something right in your organization to create more flow of income to many more people than when you started. I'm super proud of that. This business gives you so much opportunity, so much free time, so much community. Community, yeah, community for sure. The community that we have built is, I think, one of the most beautiful things that we have nowadays Mm. to be able to have an online community of and people and WhatsApp chats and, and Mm. and all these classes of listening to each other's stories, growing from them and really supporting each other. I feel Mm -hmm. that I I've always wanted so much of that in my life. Um, Mm. I'm from Latin America. So I, I grew up with, women just being sometimes mean to other women, you know, and we grew up like very cautious. And I've learned throughout these years and with this community that women can empower women. And that is so powerful when we start Mm. to see each other and lift each other and help each other and not compete with each other, but Mm. um, actually be there for one another. And it's really beautiful to see Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. here. Yeah. I mean, that's all. That's it. That's everything. What does Jonah say about all these changes in your life in these last years? He's just really grateful to be here on the land. For him, it's just being outside. In Santa Fe? Yeah, just being closer to nature for him seems to be like medicine. In terms of the changes over the last several years, you know, me going from traveling like every third week to being home all the time, he's so happy. He can just come in. (laughs) <laughs> lay on me and then go back to his cave, you know, <laughs> his his little house. And he, he couldn't be happier. And I personally, I would have never known that it was possible for me to have this kind of freedom in my own place. You know, I always thought travel meant freedom. And now I know that freedom is really about how, how free can I feel in my own home, in my own mind. And I think he feels that shift in me. I think he's thankful for it. Were there a lot of mindset changes that you had to do in order to feel all this abundance that you're feeling right now? Well, 
For sure. I had to recalibrate my relationship to money, which took a long time, several years, figuring out what those first memories were, what the impressions were. You know, if you're listening to this and you haven't heard me talk about this yet, that Simplify course that I do is really good for that. And upcoming this fall, there's going to be a monthly mentorship, super reasonable, super packed with all of what I know. And a lot of it has to do with calibrating what money means to you. So if you can, you know, like Kate Northrup says in Money, a Love Story, think about what your first memory of money is. Think about how that impacted you then, the beliefs that you developed then. Think about how that impacts you today and the beliefs that you're still carrying with you today from a five-year-old mind who witnessed something said or happening to this person who's in her, his 30s, 40s, 50s, 20s, whatever. Still, that memory sits with you and impacts how you operate, which I feel very strongly is just nothing but a mistake and can be rectified. Totally. I think that this whole idea of money is just part of the system as well, you know? Mm, I agree. What ends up needing to happen is instead of affording money, some value, ascribing to money, some value of evil, problem, you give money the value of, wow, this is a way for me to create activism in my life. It's a way for me to be philanthropic. It's a way for me to love on my people. (laughs) It's not a problem. Money is no longer an evil force to me because of what I saw as as a kid. And you're just involving everybody in your business. I love that about you. Um, I know that James is part of your community. I love that. Yeah, he ha- he he's one of your from, biggest leaders. He helps from time to time. He's like <laughs> one of the one of the sort of grounding forces in my life. And he's been what can I say? He's just he's just the best thing that ever happened to me. And we're never getting married and <laughs> I like it like that. You know, it's like I don't I don't need that anymore. I think you guys are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> You know that I never wanted to get married either. Mm -hmm. I love that you're never getting married. I love that. I love that commitment that comes from the heart and really trusting each other. I think that that's one of the biggest, biggest lessons. Mm. How did you end up wanting to do it all over again? You know, second time around, falling in love, moving in. And I know that James is amazing. But what took Um, you to really... I didn't, I wasn't looking for it. We just met on the street. We became friends. We went out to lunch. At the time, I had another boyfriend with whom I'm still really close. And James was just like, hey, I would really love to basically be with you, but you have a boyfriend and I don't want you to contact me unless you're single. (laughs) I love that that story. You're in love. That (laughs) was it. Like, it was just ridiculous how quickly that sort of woke me up a little bit and then it was many months before my boyfriend at the time and I broke up and once we did I reached out to James and I was like hey he's still free and he wasn't really (laughs) but he got himself free within a few days and we've been together ever since you know really good partnership that's beautiful Mm -hmm. I know that you're big on conscious relationships and you have an amazing relationship with your ex Yes. With Jonas's dad nowadays. Yeah. And do you ever share about that way of really creating these new world relationships about staying in touch, about forgiveness, about how your children can benefit from their parents just getting over it and really forgiving whatever is going on in the relationship? Well, at least one of you, if you're listening to this and you're going through it, there's a book actually that I co-wrote called Better Apart. If you're dealing with separation or pending divorce or whatever. But that book will reflect what I'm about to say, which is at least one person in the couple has to be willing to soften. By soften, I don't mean be walked all over, you know, get what you need, but don't take advantage. Don't be a jerk. Don't try and be right. 
just get what you need, soften, and be moving on. You know, there's no point in being the right one and winning and milking someone for all they're worth. It's not about that. It's about the fact that you two don't belong together. To adult to adult, recognize that. Move on. Forgive each other for whatever you thought they did wrong. And for the sake of the children, especially if there are children involved, be great to each other. That child is looking at how you treat her or his other parent and taking it as a personal affront subconsciously because that parent is a part of that child and so if your child sees you being a jerk to your ex or your soon-to-be ex you're being a jerk to your child and that child is going to have to grow up and dismantle all of these impressions all of these impressions about their other parent who failed who lost who left who didn't give who beat who abused i'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that abuser is still a part of the child. And there are ways to talk about that person so that you don't make the child feel as though they are wrong for being. It's so delicate. It's the most delicate thing in this world. You think you're just breaking up with your person. But guess what? You're cutting off a part of that child's life. You better do it well. You better be nice. You better know that every time you talk about that person, even if they did terribly abuse, you say things like, this person is in pain. We have to forgive. We have to move forward. We have to love. This person's in pain. The only people who can hurt other people are people in pain. Donald Trump is in pain. If I look at him, all I see is a five-year-old kid. I'm not voting for him. Please let him get out but I see a pain-stricken child who has done nothing with his adult life but wave around his financial you-know-what mm -hmm. and try and win. You know who does that? A child who is beaten in some way, whether it was emotionally, physically, sexually, who knows. But that kid was beaten down. To make your whole life about hurting other people to make your whole life about winning, to make your whole life about putting down people who are different from you, that is a person in pain. So when you talk about your ex to your kids, make sure that those are the kinds of sentiments you share, not what a fucking failure, not what a, what a hazard, what a problem, what a poison. That's part of your kid. Be careful. Yeah, and that's part of what you chose at that moment, you know? At the end of I didn't, the day, we choose I had it. good teachers. I had really good teachers. Lauren Zander, who's the, one of the founders of the Handel Group, she's moved on and is doing other projects, but she was in my ear at the time, and mm -hmm. she taught me. She was like, Elena, you have to understand. This is a part of your kid. That's your kid's father for the rest of your life. Do this. <laughs> Be kind. Say this. Try that. And we were able to come to a place of forgiveness so quickly for given our age and our level of immaturity and inexperience, <laughs> you know, we just rocked it. And I'm so proud of who we are. That's amazing. Yeah. And that's what we can do, you know, mm, I think mm. that's the best thing we can do because totally. it takes us so long. I mean, it took me years to, to unlearn and then relearn and then go through this whole thing with all my trauma is that if we can see that and not feed that to our children, we're doing yeah. good. We're doing good. Yeah. I, I, I watch you and how you operate with your kids and I'm really, it's very impressive. I have good teachers. <laughs> no, touche, pussycat. Touche. You know, touché. I remember our conversation about like two or three years ago, I called you and I'm like, I don't know how you do it with all these things in my schedule and my agenda. And you taught me how to manage my time. Remember? Mm -hmm, of course. Um, my God. To the point. And it was just because I was like, I don't know if I can do all this. I have my girls and I have my family and I really want to be a good mom. And you taught me how to be so consistent and so organized and mm -hmm. just like look at time as what it is, you know, and, and it changed Time my is life. your friend. Yeah. It's your friend. And you also taught me to, to schedule in my self-love rituals and yes. my, all the stuff that we love and never yes. forget myself with everything that we're giving out. Mm. And, and it really did help me and my family. So, yeah. That's right. It was well, amazing I'm so happy for to me. hear that. Yeah. That's everything right there, sister. <laughs> 
everything. That's everything. All these acupuncture appointments, massage appointments, and nail appointments, and that really gives us fuel to give more. That's so, right. Yeah, we're all we're all trying. <laughs> Dude, for sure. For sure. Proud of you. Very proud of you. It's nice to hear you on the other side of that. You know, we'll have good days and bad days, but I can hear that you are feeling in service to your family and in, in, in a state of mastery around time, which is really a blessing. It's a bless. When you learn that, it, it, everything changed for me. Yep. I was giving too much time um, for other things. You know, I wasn't scheduling in my family, like really scheduling it. Like this cannot move. This is always going to be here. And this other thing is always going to be here. And like, that's right. Managing it kind of like a business. It's just yeah. unmovable, unnegotiable. Yeah. Right. You've taught me how to lead at another level. And I'm so grateful for that because it, it's always inspired me. How, mm. how you do it. And I'm wondering, how are you leading today differently than, than how you started? Because I know that doTERRA makes us expand our consciousness and our awareness and so many other things, like with such a small community. And now you have thousands. I mean, I don't know how many people you have in your community. How many? Like 45,000 wow. at the moment, 45,000 households, let's say. Wow. My superpower is to plan for my own obsolescence, plan for my death. And to put in place in all of my leaders an unshakable confidence that they can handle what they're handling. And so I spend a lot of time personally with each one. There are 12th one is burgeoning now. And under them, each of them, they all have three, you know, so go to 36 plus the 12. And for all those people and for many of the folks under those other leaders, I am available to them to help them grow their confidence and it's one of the greatest honors of my life yeah that's how i spend my time I, you know of course i teach about the business i i've spent the last five years with my business partner and design partner michelle martello creating an entire expansive educational platform for my team which is a lot of archived self-directed teachings and creating other courses and, and but all the courses that I offer, whether they're for, you know, people in my business or not, most of the stuff is really just very general and for anyone in any business, it all feeds how those leaders on my team see themselves and work just the same way you do, more efficiently, with more grace, you know, more care. And that's all I can that's all I can do really. You know, I don't get to take the money with me when I die. I can take the moments of connection with the people that are working with me. And, and I can take the moments where they have those complete transformations of confidence. That's what I get to take with me. But as you can see, I'm always thinking about death. And it's like one of my favorite topics. You know, all the practices are really for how to have a great death and not really how to have a great life. I, I have been taught and I continue to believe. So that's all I'm up to. You know, how are we going to have a great death? Do you have it all planned? Like no. What you'd like? All I know. Die? No, no. All I know is how I want to feel in my mind and my heart when that moment comes. Yes. Utterly at peace. I'm not afraid. After watching my mother die so up close, I just am not afraid. I see it. I get it. It's a beautiful transition. And obviously it would be ideal, like utterly ideal, if somebody would be near me the way I was near my mother, just whispering in her ear and telling her it would be perfectly fine to go that everybody is sorted, you know, handled. But if not, I know how I will be in my head. Yes, in your own mind. Yeah. I know that I'm fully ready and fine with that. I love it. I've always had this thing with that too. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so sure. <laughs> in my 20s, I had like a design of my sarcophagus. <laughs> oh, nice one. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> and I had it like carved with like mantras that I wanted. And uh, I still have the, the design, but I had like this whole thing. I was into like Egypt and death and everything, all the rituals they did. I thought it was beautiful. And I've always wanted that to 
die with my family close in a room. Mm-hmm, like I mm-hmm. thought that that's so beautiful to transition that way. ¿Cómo se dice sarcophagus en español? Uh, sarcophagus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What did you have to let go of to become the woman, the leader that you are today? What today? What was the biggest thing that you could say in your mind that you had to let go of? Doubt of any kind. Doubt does not live here. Sort of like cheesecake. It doesn't, it's not allowed in. The minute I feel it, even remotely on the periphery of my anything, I just practice. I'll sit, meditate. I'll remind myself of why I'm here. I'll remind myself that anything that I do is for the benefit of someone else. Stop making it about me. You know, I finally got old enough that I can really do that in a moment. And I think it, I think it only comes with time. It was always so hard for me to get through that. You know, I would just smoke weed to get through a moment of doubt, go distract myself with some bullshit on the roof, bunch of cigarettes and a friend, you know? Yeah. But now I just, I can just go to my practice, go to the inside, the, the innermost view, and remember, and I think that comes with age. So many beautiful things come with age. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. I'm even enjoying like my saggy arm. I don't even care. You don't have a saggy arm. I kind of do. It's okay. I don't think so. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh my God. I just don't even care anymore. You know, I'm like, I'm cool. I'm cool with it. It's another moment i think that so many other things become important i think that we already live beauty in our body for so many years and hopefully we took advantage of it and we enjoyed it and then there comes another part the Mm -hmm. next part of wisdom Mm -hmm. that's right and calm that's right not giving a shit anymore (laughs) yes 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 (laughs) yes What's your sweetest daily practice you cannot live without? Sitting on my new patio, meditating in the morning. It's like the best thing that ever happened to me. Does it overlook the trees? Yeah, it's looking onto the Sangre de Cristo Mountains and, and way out into the National Forest. Like there's no, it's just forest. I never could have imagined that I would be in a place like this at a time like this. I was sure I would be in a place like this when I was like 60 but not when I was 50. We left New York in March, just thinking we would just get away for a month or so and see what would happen. And I fell so madly in love with this place. It's so my home, this this region of the world, the Southwest, it's so my place. I've always been obsessed with Native American culture, not in a, you know, not in a bad way, in in a way that is so deeply reverent. And uh, I can't, I can't, believe my good fortune that I'm here. I'm also very, very close to the Upaya Zen Center, Roshi Joan, Halifax. And um, wow, she's she's just the greatest. And I'm studying with her online now because obviously we can't go to <laughs> the actual place, <laughs> even though it's a mile away. But boy, I I am just beyond excited to be in this part of the world now. Do you have any friends there? Any more friends? Or did you just move out by yourself? No, one of my best friends actually moved here in February and she was like a lighthouse. She was Ooh. like, why don't you just come here? And I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. She said, okay. just, just come for a month. <laughs> that's what we thought we were doing. Honestly, we got one way tickets and we were like, all right, let's just go see. And um, it just became medicine, this place. When home becomes medicine, mm. it's the best place to be. Yeah, it's really true. How are you guys doing there? We're doing good. We're in Miami, so we get to go to the beach every morning. You know, I can't complain. Right. We have a beautiful garden, a pool, but it's hard. Not so much for me and, and Rod to see other people. We're, we're keeping very close to our friends, so we do see some mm-hmm. people. But for the girls to see more of their mm-hmm. friends and that interaction, it's kind of getting at a point where... I'm really starting to, I can't feel guilty because it's not, I mean, I can't control this, but I do feel, I do feel it. I do feel for them. 
yeah. and this whole next year of how we're going to live it. And yeah. Yeah. So I get that deeply. I like to think that it's going to be one of those situations where they, they just become more resilient and more capable of pivoting quickly. Yeah. That's my hope. Hopefully more grateful too. Yeah. After having so much, this generation has so much it's mm-hmm. nice when we get out and they start to really feel thankful for being out, seeing yep. their friends, you know, yep. the little things. Totally. The littlest, tiniest things. Yeah. That's been a good lesson. I've, I've definitely yeah. wanted less and less and less. I'm at, I'm at so much less Yep. every month. It's so good. I got rid of a lot of stuff too in every way. And everything I know, mind, body, spirit, physical stuff, stuff, <laughs> yeah. stuff. <laughs> God bless. I have my last question. It's my juicy question. How do you contribute to being part of our generation of love? Hmm. Every day I interact with a number of people, whether it's through business or relations in my family. And what I try to do is be as attentive as possible. If I can't be attentive, I'll literally tell them I can't be attentive and I'm going to call you back another time or I'm going to see you another time. But in everything that I do, that's what I do. I try and give as much attention as possible. And I think that the ripple effect of attention, good attention, presence, is more love overall. That's my impression. It's been my experience also. That's beautiful. Yeah. I love you. Where can we find you? Where can we go online to find your books, your courses, read about you? I think the best way would be to go to elenabrower.com, E-L-E-N-A-B-R-O-W-E-R. All the courses are there on the top. Simplify my monthly mentorship, which is coming soon. And then the podcast lives there as well. You just click on podcasts and you'll get taken to the page where the podcast lives and Practice You, my journal, and the new one, Coming, Being You, is going to be out in January of 2021. So I'm super excited about that. I can't can't wait wait. to hold it. (laughs) It's so juicy. It's so juicy. It's so delicious. I'm so happy. And it's a lot more spacious, too. You'll see. We left a little more space than usual. I love it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for inspiring us. Thank you for walking beside us. Thank you for creating this amazing community, for being such a light in so many ways. Mm -hmm. I really honor you. I love to have you as my mentor, as my friend. You really have changed my life in a very wonderful way. What a blessing is that. My God, thank you for saying all those wonderful things. I'm I'm honored. I really am. Just so much love. Love you so. Say hi to Rod. Besito, yes. Say hi to James. Besito. I (laughs) will. We could see each other again. Those two We could do a we could do a dinner, (laughs) Zoom double date dinner. Please let's let's do that. I love that idea. Okay, good. Done. (laughs) Love you. I love you. And I love you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Talk to you soon, okay? Okay, love. Bye, honey. Suscríbete para que sigamos conectados y comparte este podcast con quienes necesiten esta inspiración en sus vidas. En mi comunidad de doTERRA te enseño paso a paso a convertir tu vida en una natural y holística. Serás parte de una comunidad con más de 600 personas alrededor del mundo que comparten tu camino. Tendrás acceso exclusivo a cursos gratis, a nuestro grupo privado de Facebook, a nuestro chat en Telegram, a emails informativos, a llamadas mensuales, a oil parties y muchísimo más. Conoce más en www.begenerationlove.com slash doterra. Espero haberte inspirado a vivir la espiritualidad moderna y a ser una generación de amor. Be Generation Love es producido en Miami por Rodrigo Sardi, editado por Erika Rico y dirección y guión quien les habla, Sara Macmillan. Recuerda suscribirte y nos escuchamos en un nuevo episodio.